Hi everybody! No matter how skilled you are painting your lures, there's only this much you can do with paint alone. In this movie I'll show you how you can use glitter flakes to add some very cool effects to your lures. So just hang in here and I'll show you how it's done. You can paint some really cool lures with your airbrush, but sometimes you just want to add some more bling to your lure. And to do that you can use uh, foil, which I've covered in another movie, but you can also use this, which is glitter flakes. Uh, within fishing, uh, glitter flakes are often used for adding to your soft plastic to add these uh, sparkles within it. Uh, but they are also used for many other purposes and if you want to search for them, you'll probably find them in something uh, for uh, making nails uh, for, the, for the ladies. Uh, and uh, that would be exactly the same and be useful for this purpose as well. So uh, just search and you will find. You can find them in many hobby stores as well for other purposes, I guess. But, um, uh, well, just find some. They come in very many, many sizes. Uh, depending on the effect you want, you could choose a smaller size or bigger size. Bigger size will give you a more blingy, uh, shiny effect. Uh, smaller sizes will help you get a smooth layer uh, and uh, the use of uh, both would be depending a bit on the, the lure and the effect you want the glitter to have. For these spoons I use for my coastal fishing for sea trout I've uh, tried two different things. Um, a coarse one which is giving me a very sparkly effect but also gives me a surface that is not as smooth and if I want it to be smooth I had to need to add more layers of uh, coating and the lure itself would be thicker so might not be the, the best purpose for the coarse um, glitter more like this one which is a much finer glitter and uh, much easier to get smooth but you just have to consider when choosing a lure for your project uh, if the lure actually can hold a thicker layer because you'll add a few layers extra of coating for this project. Okay? Before I get started I just want to show you uh, some lures where I have added the initial layer of sparkle to uh, the, the flakes here. And uh, this one is like the, the spoon with the more coarse layer and uh, giving it a very uh, nice and flaky look. Uh, the other one here is the, the finer flakes uh, which are more, um, yeah, I don't know what to call it. Well, it's more smooth and uh, will be easier to cover. You will also easier be able to see the details on the, the, the jerk bait here, which is uh, more or less covered with the other one. Well, let's just get started and uh, let's have a look of what you need. Well, you need some lures, of course, and for this purpose, I'll be using jerk baits. Uh, my uh, own the jerk which I've casted a few of and um, one uh, thing that's good for this project regarding the jerks is that it doesn't really matter that it has a few extra layers of coating uh, it, it won't change the movement and the general appearance of the lure so these are good for this one okay I have uh, just casted these a few days ago and just uh, cleaned off the, the edges and uh, Wash them once with the dishwashing soap. Um, you don't need to have them completely smooth. Normally before painting I would sand them down a bit and everything but I don't need that for this because the, all the, the minor details will be covered anyway in all the, the flakes. So I have a few of these. I have uh, uh, set them up in uh, some of my holders here. And uh, what else do I need? Well of course I need some flakes. I have a few here, I have some golden flakes, I have some copper flakes and also I have a little bit left of the, the holographic flakes here with the very sparkly effect. Okay? To store my flakes I use these uh, small containers as uh, they're very handy and they also have a, a lid on them that is kind of soft in the plastic. And um, this will enable me to do uh, make uh, some lids that has uh, holes in them. And uh, to do that I use this uh, well hole maker uh, which is uh, mainly uh, used for making more holes in my belt when I eat too much. Uh, 
but they are also quite useful for this purpose and you can choose different sizes um, depending on what sizes of flakes you're using. Of course larger holes for larger flakes and you can make fewer uh, uh, holes if you want to add them more sparingly or whatever. Okay, so that's quite handy with those. Apart from that you just need some uh, ordinary 5 minute epoxy uh, which you probably all have and uh, well then you're more or less ready to go you just need a, a brush some alcohol and some other few things but um, that is within the normal uh, gear okay well let's start covering some lures with glitter the first thing you need to do is to mix up some 5 minute epoxy and to do this as epoxy is not that healthy for you you should always wear gloves and uh, probably also a mask, but uh, to be able to speak in this movie, I will leave the mask off, but I will use my gloves. So I'll just uh, take those on here. Okay, and then I'll just mix up uh, some of the epoxy here. And um, you should consider how much you mix up as um, it takes a little while to uh, actually cover the lure and uh, I would say that you should mix up at maximum of two lures, but uh, for the first time maybe just add uh, for one lure. And then I'll just add a few drops of alcohol here, like that, and mix it up. This will make the, the epoxy more thin and uh, give you a little extra time to actually um, work with it. However, it is a bit more tough to mix it, so um, well as the alcohol starts to evaporate it actually won't be a problem. And then I'll just uh, grab my lure here and I'll cover the whole thing with, uh, with the epoxy uh, making sure that there are no dry spots because you will see those uh, immediately afterwards so uh, just uh, grab a brush and uh, brush it on in a nice layer all over the place okay and I think uh, I think the whole lure is now covered in the epoxy so I'll just um, just finish up making sure it's as smooth as possible like this and then I have a clean piece of paper which is not that clean anymore but uh, somewhat and I have my little container here with the with the flakes in it and I'll just apply those and um, the reason why I have a clean piece of paper is that uh, I can put those flakes back in the container and use them again because there will be a lot of them dropping off here make sure that there are no Bots uncovered. You can tap it a bit to get rid of those that are not in connection with the glue. Okay, and now as you can see, you have a completely nice and sparkly lure here. I'll just leave this for the, the glue to, to harden. If you're fast, you can uh, make two. And uh, well, this glue seems to be okay still, so I'll just uh, take another one and uh, see if I can uh, cover that in glue as well while I'm at it. The alcohol does add a little extra hardening time to the epoxy so you can maybe use it for more than five minutes depending on the epoxy and uh, the amount of alcohol probably I don't know but now I'm just quickly going to cover this so now I just need to wait until these two are hardened and then we can go on to the next step if you want to reuse your, your brush, you can just uh, put it into a container with some alcohol. Just uh, wipe off as much of the glue as you can. 
put it into the alcohol and uh, just brush it a little around to uh, dissolve the, the epoxy and uh, just have to do it while it's still not hardened and then after a while it is uh, actually ready to be dried out and you can use it another day. So you don't have to uh, use single use brushes, you can use these several times, more than 10, I know. Okay, so I just put this one back, like that. As you can see I ended up with a, a bunch of lures which are now ready for the next step. Uh, I actually ended up making a few with uh, with two colors uh, which uh, worked out quite fine here with the, the finer uh, the finer flakes. Uh, I also tried to use some some uh, some larger flakes. These are one millimeter, uh, but I really don't think it turned out that well. But still, I'm going to take them on to the next steps. Now uh, we need to prepare the lures for painting. Uh, the surface with the flakes alone is uh, too uneven uh, to to make a, a nice paint job on. So the next step will be to give them a few layers of epoxy. This should uh, make sure that both the, the flakes are not falling off uh, while painting and so on, but also giving you a nice uh, smooth surface to paint on. So I have uh, taken out my uh, good old rotator here. I will put that in my fume cabinet in a little while. And uh, then I will mix up some uh, epoxy and start coating the lures. This will be more or less the, the same as, uh, as I've covered in, in this movie about uh, covering lures with epoxy. Uh, the only thing that's different is that I will probably be using maybe more mixes and more brushes to be sure not to transfer flakes from one lure to another when I go to different colors. But um, apart from that, it's just uh, mixing and applying and then leaving in the fume cabinet for uh, 12 to uh, 24 hours uh, for hardening and then giving them another layer. Uh, but, um, well, I'll just leave a few clips for that and then we'll see how the result is in the end. I think you'll be using quite a lot of uh, epoxy uh, to cover the flakes because well, it adds uh, uh, maybe half a millimeter more to the lure, so um, I think you should consider making a larger batch than normal to cover the lure. But, um Remember to mix it thoroughly. I use the, the heat gun to heat it up a bit as it will be more lighter fluent and uh, the, the bubbles will easier come to the surface but actually I don't find with this epoxy that it's a great problem with the bubbles. They, they tend to pop themselves uh, on the lure when they get to the surface so uh, it's not a big problem. but you can easily see that the brush picks up some of the, the flakes and that's why I will be changing brush for every color uh, to make sure that I don't transfer flakes from one to another. The first layer of epoxy is now fully hardened but before we go on with the layer 2 there's just one thing I will do. Um, if you feel the, the body of the lure, you can feel that some of the, the flakes are actually standing upright more or less and giving them uh, the lure a very rough surface. So to prevent this and to give the layer 2 a, a better chance of, of being completely smooth, I'll just grab some very fine sandpaper, this is grade 400, and I'll just wipe over the, the complete lure to make sure that all those uh, extra high tops are removed. Okay, and I'll just do that on all the lures and then I'll just give them layer 2. Now I have sanded all the lures and we are ready to give them the second coat. And uh, this time I, there's no chance of any flakes uh, falling off, so I'll just be mixing up uh, one um, cup of uh, epoxy and uh, just uh, 
coding away on all the lures. So uh, that will be more or less business as usual when you're coding lures. Okay, so I'll just begin with that and I'll put on my safety gear right away this time, okay? The second layer of epoxy is now fully hardened here on our improved uh, blanks and although the, the, the surface isn't completely smooth, it's, uh, it's good enough to get a decent uh, paint job on them. So they're more or less ready to start painting. One thing I'll do before that though is that I will take the, each lure and make sure to, to clean up any epoxy on the eyes here. Um, I'll do that because they, after the painting they will have two or three layers more epoxy and if uh, the, the eye is already partly covered it will be completely covered and I'll have to remove quite a lot to get a uh, um, room for the, the split rings here. So I'll just do that and I'll just use a, a, a Stanley knife for that and uh, cut it off. It should be fairly easy. Okay? I'm now more or less uh, ready to start painting the lures. But before I do so, I'd just uh, like to mention that of course when you have shiny bodies uh, with a lot of effect like these ones, you don't want to cover them all up in paint. So you have to be careful how you paint the lures. Uh, to do so, you can use some transparent paints like these ones, which will allow the effects to shine through if you don't put on a too, too thick a layer. Some areas you might want to use uh, solid colors on. For my uh, baits here, it will mainly be the, the belly and the back parts, where I would like to, to um, have uh, solid colors. Also, I will be using some gold and silver effects for scales on the sides and so on. But of course, always try may be sure to, to have as much of the effect uh, left there. The first pattern I'll be painting, and probably the only one that is included in the movie, is a perch-like pattern. Uh, I have made some stencils here for the stripes, for the fins, and uh, apart from that I have my, my usual um, metal uh, net mesh which I'll be using for the scales and I also have some thermoform stencils for the, the gill plates and the mouth parts. So I'm more or less ready to start painting now and uh, I'll just uh, mount up a camera in here and leave you some juicy grips but I won't go into too much detail. You will have to uh, just learn from watching I guess. Okay? Let's just get going.
The three lures you saw me paint in the movie has now had some eyes attached to them and I've given them three layers of epoxy. And here you see the result. And I must say I'm very satisfied with the outcome. Uh, both the, the patterns that I figured out and uh, the, the effect of the, the flakes really is very nice, I think. Very blingy and I'm certain that on some days this is just what you need to get those extra fish. Apart from those, I also painted and covered the, and coated the, the other lures that I've covered in, in uh, flakes. I'll just give you a few comments on those as well. Here you see the, the ones that were covered with the, with the larger flakes, the one millimeter flake and the, the green bag. And uh, well, I, I ended up uh, made, making this uh, fire tiger pattern on them and uh, even uh, had to cover those uh, flakes with some transparent colors to get a more consistent uh, look. But I think they turned out quite well. Um, in the end, I probably could have just covered them in the silver flakes and uh, just used the, the coloration um, uh, of, of painting them. Uh, but, um, well, this came out quite nice anyway. I also made these two, which are the ones with the cover back and the holographic belly. And also these came out quite nice, I think. Um, I think that uh, in many cases you will get just as far by just um, painting colors on them, but still these are looking very nice as well. Okay, that was all for this time. I hope you enjoyed for this movie about adding bling to your lures, and I hope you'll keep coming back to my channel. Well, nothing left to say, but thanks for watching, and I hope you see me soon.